We're on top of the world! <laughs> Greetings comrades, Multigame Master 1 reporting in and welcome back to Let's Play 100% Banjo-Tooie. In the last episode, we started exploring Mayhem Temple, and in this episode, we're going to continue exploring Mayhem Temple. Let's start in Target Sand's Temple, get Kazooie as our handheld gun here, with the Brigo Blaster, and proceed to the door. Good. I see you have mastered the art of bird handling. I now challenge you to collect the sacred statues and find your prize. And accept the challenge we shall. Let's go, comrades. We are now inside Target Sand's temple, and this place is rather large and maze-like. You'll end up being lost if you don't know where it is that you're trying to go. We have a couple of things to look at, a beehive and a signpost. We're not going to worry about the beehive, but the signpost we will worry about. Look out for door panels in the walls and press A when standing in front of one to open it. I'll explain about the door panels in a second. When in Brico Blaster sections, activate the aiming sight by holding the left bumper or the right bumper. Release the button to deactivate it again. That's interesting. We'll definitely make a note of that. Those are the door panels that were being referred to earlier. Just get close to one and then press the A button to open it, as you can see. Now the main objective within Tarkazan's temple is to find and collect as many of those jade statues as you can. You can potentially get two prizes. In fact, the maximum amount of jade statues that you should have at the end of this should be 20 so that you can get at those prizes. I see a couple of them over there. Have to get past that sput sput. Let me see if I can shoot him. No. 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 Oh, come on. Seriously? Thank you. I am such a lousy shot. With 10 statues, not bad, mortal. 10 statues gains you entry to my slightly sacred chamber. So with the 10 jade statues, you can now gain access to the slightly sacred chamber. But we're not done yet because we have more jade statues to collect. Like I said before, you can get at two prizes if you collect 20 jade statues, so let's keep searching for the rest. Also, in this passageway, if you open it up and explore inside, you'll find a Jinjo that you can rescue. With that, we will continue our search for the jade statue. So there's one right here, one right here. By the way, there will be Moggies to try to stop you from collecting the jade statue, so just take them out on sight. Give them a few eggs and they will go down. I will say though, I don't understand how it is that eggs can kill enemies. If anything, it will probably just leave bruises and scratches on their bodies. But I won't question the game whatsoever. Eggs are useful as ammo, and that's that. So let's see, we have 18 jade statues, only two left. Just gonna grab these eggs, kill this Moggy, and here they are. 20. Most impressive, mortal. 20 statues gains you entry to my really sacred chamber. So we can now proceed inside the chambers, and it doesn't really matter which door you enter first, you'll always start in the slightly sacred chamber first. In the middle of the slightly sacred chamber, there's the next Jiggy. Now if there was one Jiggy inside the slightly sacred chamber, there must be another one inside the really sacred chamber. We're gonna head there in a second. Right now I want to pick up something very important that lies beyond this door and through this passageway. So let's make our way over there. That's the item we need. Oh and by the way, this is a brand new enemy, a snapdragon. Don't get underneath it, otherwise it will chomp you and take away one point of your health. Just take it out on sight. These are the eggs that we need for what's up ahead. What's good about these eggs is that they can be used as rapid fire ammo, but only for a limited amount of time. So do whatever it is you need to with them before you run out of time. Here in the really sacred chamber. Look Banjo, there's another Jiggy. This is just too easy. Yep, we'll have the game finished in no time. Way to break the fourth wall Banjo and Kazooie. And as you two said that, you may have spoken too soon. Halt, Morto! Thought you'd get another Jiggy that easily, eh? The first boss of the game, Target Zan, Despotic Dizzy Totem God. 
I am Target Zan, mighty Mayan god of target shooting. Prepare to meet thy dark ridden doom. The weakness on Target Zan is the targets that you see, just shoot at them in order to destroy his segments. Ah! I can't feel my legs anymore! Get him, you worthless moggies! Each time you destroy a segment of Target Zan, he'll send an army of monkeys after you in order to destroy you. Take them out so that you can move on to the next section, otherwise you won't be going anywhere. Egg for you and egg for you. Also, keep in mind that as you destroy the segments, they will shoot darts at you, so take care. More monkeys, egg in your face, egg in your face, and egg in your face. Let's move on. I have to say, this boss fight is definitely good target practice. <laughs> Get it? Target practice? Because we're shooting targets with eggs? Too soon? Yeah, I thought so. Let's just move on. I will say though, this is more of a shooting range than target practice. No! You've beaten me! Now suffer as I invoke my sacred self-destruct! Oh boy, take cover! So as you just saw right there, Target Zan explodes after he's defeated as soon as all of his segments are destroyed and all of the monkeys have been defeated. I don't know what happens if you get too close to him and he self-destructs. Maybe it's an insta-kill, I'm not really sure. If one of you could let me know about that in the comments below the video, that would be appreciated. But after Target Zan is defeated, we have our next Jiggy. We have won the battle, comrades. But the war has just begun. So, with the challenge complete in Target Zan's temple, we can leave. Such a shame. I definitely had fun in this challenge. Things to shoot at randomly. Jade statues to collect. It was all fun while it lasted. Oh well, we have a job to do and we can't really stay here for long. So, with that we can just get a move on. Don't look at me, Beehive. I'm watching you. Okay, let's head back to the lobby. Let's see, what can we do next? I'm trying to think about this as we move. Oh, I know. How about we go help Chief Boatazin find Target Zan's priceless relic thingy, shall we? And this gives me the opportunity to show the warp pad. So stand on top of it and press B. Select the point in the world which you wish to warp to. And then, you'll warp there instantly. So let's see. Use this fly pad. We can now take to the skies and fly back to the treasure chamber. But before we do, you may have seen before that there was a Jinjo on top of the Mayan kickball stadium. So we're gonna fly there and rescue him first. There he is over there and he's red. And as you see right there, we have to rescue six red Jinjos in order to get something good from them. Now we can fly off to the treasure chamber, and I'm just going to use the beak bomb to speed things up. There, we're finally here, and we have another Cheeto page right here. Two in the bag. We're definitely making good progress. We have now reached another section within the treasure chamber. Let's see what's up. Ooh, a secret passageway. Let's hit the button, open the door, and see what's beyond. Unga Bunga's cave. Unga Bunga? Is this even Mayhem Temple anymore? I doubt it. There's the priceless relic thingy. Let's go get it. Oh, great. I knew that would happen. Huh? Get out, Unga's cave. That individual that you saw right there is an Unga Bunga. He guards the priceless relic thingy while he sleeps. So we're going to have to do this silently in retrieving it. We can do so by tiptoeing, and that's done by tilting the control stick forward ever so slightly. And I'm going to stay quiet about this because I really need to concentrate on this and maintain my stance as I get Banjo to tiptoe. You guys should see me right now. My hands are shaking and my heart is throbbing. Careful. Almost there. Mm -hmm. 
We made it. Now we can grab the relic and take it back. And it's rather difficult to go back through that horrible part of the area. Especially with Banjo carrying the relic on his hand. So we're just going to take this passageway and see where it leads. Hopefully it takes us back to the start. Let's see, where are we now? Oh good, we're at the start. So we can take the relic with us and leave. That was easy. You'll see initially when you go to the treasure chamber that Banjo no longer has the relic in his hand, but trust me, it's in his possession. Let's see, anything for us to grab up here? Doesn't look like it. Okay, let's make our way down and hand the relic over to the chief. You found Target Sand's priceless relic thingy! The cavemen stole it. Why those thieving little... Careful! This is a family game. Oh yes, so it is. Why don't I just give you a jiggy? That makes sense to me. And with that, we have our next jiggy. I wonder how Unga Bunga is going to react to this. Ay! Pebble gone! Me in much trouble! Big beatings! Gee, I wonder what happened to the relic. Do you guys have any idea what happened to the relic? Anyways, we can now get the jiggy. Let's see, where can we go next? I suppose we can head back to the Jade Snake Grove and see what else we can find there. So let's use this warp pad to our advantage, make our way back to the start, and head on through the door. But before we do, I'm gonna grab some more feathers. There we go. It's nice to be full on eggs and feathers. Oh, I see jam jars up ahead. Let's get ready to learn a new move. Grip grab. Listen up to what you're told. On the edges you can now hold. Move along with the greatest of ease. Button X to attack what you please. That'll be all. Dismiss. <laughs> I was not quite expecting that. Sometimes that will happen. The hatch will slam shut on jam jars. And, well, he's just gonna crawl his way back in. It's rather funny to look at, actually. I'm glad to have caught that. Right here, we have another stony. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I didn't catch that either. Can these guys not speak English at all? Jeez. A signpost. Warning! Trespassers in the quicksand are liable to be eaten. That's actually a true fact. So you'll see the same area in which we got the Jiggy as Golden Goliath, and you can only get the Jiggy as him because of this reason. If you're banjoing Kazooie and you set foot in the quicksand, that Dragoonda will eat you and take away one point of your health. So that's the reason why we got the Jiggy as Golden Goliath. But we already have the Jiggy, so we don't have to worry about it. Now let's see what's over here. Ooh, another warp pad. And more of these moggies. Another stony. Please speak English. Wait a minute. What did you say? I think he said something about Kazooie being a dim bird. Man, Kazooie got owned. Or maybe in this case, she got stoned by a stony. <laughs> Alright, let's see what's in here while dodging those darts. Code Chamber. This is where you activate my cheats. Stand on this podium if you want to know how. Okie dokie. You must spell out the cheat code I have given you. Use the left stick to move the aiming sight, and press the left trigger or the right trigger to fire. Aim carefully though, if you hit a wrong letter, you'll have to start again. 
So to activate the cheats, you have to spell them correctly. If you spell them incorrectly, you'll have to start over. Let's start with the cheat that Heggy the Hen gave us, and that's homing. H O M I N G. The homing cheat will make eggs home in on baddies. After you spell the cheat, come over to this list and you can activate the cheat from here by simply highlighting it and pressing the A button. And there we go. Now let's test this. Who can we test it on? How about you? You're just hiding around the corner, scared of eggs. Okay, uh, anyone else? Oh, I see you over there. So as you saw there, the eggs can actually home in on the baddies, and this will be useful, so I'm going to keep this cheat on for the duration of the game. Okay, let's see what's on top of the code chamber. There might be something up there as well. Up we go. I hear something. There's another Jiggy. Easy pickings. Or not. Thought you'd steal Slumber's go while he slept, did you? Well, yes, to be honest. But I heard you coming, clumsy bear. Oh. Well, Slumber is eating a Jiggy. I guess we'll have to leave. Splendid. They seem to have gone. Must get some more sleep. And he spits the Jiggy out, so now we can get it. But we'll have to do it silently. So here we go again. Gonna stay quiet for this. Banjo, 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 tiptoe. Got it! One shot, too. That's very impressive. It takes me multiple tries to get through that, especially on the Xbox Live Arcade version, since my Xbox 360 controller is a little bit too sensitive. Okay, let's see what's to the left. We have another signpost. I pushed the wrong button by accident. It's the B button to detach from the ledge. Pressing the left stick only slightly will make you tiptoe silently. Uh, well, we kind of figured that out already. Let's see what's on the right side of the code chamber. First, we need to get past all of those snapdragons. That's one down. Let's get the other one. They're both down, so now we can reach for the prize. Cheeto's page. Let's see, we're just about out of time for this episode, but we're going to do a little bit more and then I'll end things off. So let's see, where can we go next? How about that other stone door that we just destroyed? Let's use the warp pad and go back to Mumble Skull. That's so much better than walking. Having the warp everywhere within the world. It's rather amazing. Okay, there's a stone door. The more I look into it, the more I see an image of a skull. I wonder if that's somehow related to Mumbo. I doubt it. Inside the prison compound, we have another stony. Let me guess, you don't speak English either? Um, I don't think we speak that language. Who does? Seriously, can you guys speak English for us? We can't understand a word that is coming out of your mouths. There's another warp pad right there. And beyond this passageway, we have another Jiggy that we can get. But first, we need to get past the quicksand. Inside this prison, we have Dilberta the Mole. Eek! Someone get me out of here! We'll try to, Dilberta. Hmm, stone switches with a picture of a star, moon, and sun on each of them. This must represent a code. We don't have the code yet, 
but once we do, we'll solve the puzzle. Let's get on top of the prison compound and see what we can do. How about we go to the left first so that we can find a way to get to the jiggy. Waiting boots. The waiting boots can be used to navigate through the quicksand. So let's go. Go Kazooie! You can also cancel the waiting boots by pressing the X button while standing still. It's better than just waiting for the time on the waiting boots to run out. I see you over there, Dragunda. Don't even think about it. Okay, let's see what's on the other side of the prison compound. So, back up we go. Here we are. Oh! You almost had me there. I will give you that. Okay, let's see what's over here. Through this tunnel. I hope it's not too long. Cheeto's page. And there's also another Jiggy, but we can't really get to it. We'll need to find a way to get it off that column. More Moggies. What else is here? A signpost. Only a Stony can understand what another Stony speaks. That makes sense. Apparently, Stonies can speak their own language. We'll definitely need to keep that in mind. And with that, we're out of time for this episode, so we're going to stop here. In the next episode, we're going to find a way to understand whatever the heck those Stonies are saying. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. And until the next episode, this is Multigame Master 1, over and out. See you later, comrades. By the way, that's going to be my new outro. What do you guys think of it? Leave your thoughts in the comments below the video. Again, see you later, comrades.